Hi friends, welcome back to my channel, Testing Mini Bytes. I am your friend Abhinav Shaktivel, and in this video, we are going to see about context. Uh, in last video, we have understood about what are the different ways to trigger a workflow, and this video, we are going to see about context. The reason why I have separated this into different topics is because, let's say, I I directly teach you how to create a YAML file, and then you know maybe how to use it in test automation. Let's say if you are stuck somewhere, if you want to do something customized operation, you know you might be stuck. So that's the reason I want to cover different topics in detail before trying to create uh, the workflow ourselves. Once I cover these topics, I'm pretty sure that you can create the workflow yourself and then you can run your automated test or do whatever you want to do with GitHub Actions. So now context are basically a way to access information about the workflow runs uh, or your runner environments or jobs or steps. Let's say you want to get some details about the workflow that is running. Or let's say where it is running or who triggered it, or what even triggered it. You want to get this information at the runtime for whatever reasons, right? It can be any any valid reasons. Uh, for example, let's say where this is running, or what is the event that triggered it, or who triggered it. You want to log this information in 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 a in a extent report in your automated test. You want to do that. So this can be a valid requirement, but you still want to do it. How to get this information? You can add hard code then. So so these informations are available in the form of context. So that's what we are going to dive deep now, right? Even if you don't understand, that's okay. In, in maybe five to 10 minutes, you will be understanding what is context. So now, without wasting much time, uh, let's go to the uh, GitHub Docs. And uh, you notice there is a section called as context. Uh, you can you can always refer docs from the GitHub. It's pretty good. So there is a context section and there are different contexts available. Let's say I want to get some information like, what is the repository name? What is the who is the actor who triggered it, uh, or how the workflow triggered it? I can get all those information from this GitHub context. Let's click on this context here, and if you notice, it has GitHub object, which means the JSON kind of thing. And you are trying to access uh, what is the action that is running, or what is the action path, what is the action repository, what is the who is the actor who triggered it, what is the API URL for this repository. So if you want to get all this information it is available in the context that is GitHub, okay? So if you have a very closer look at this JSON is what you you basically access, any, you can access any of these information. You can access the run ID, you can access the job, you can access the GitHub access token. Uh, by default, GitHub uses your API token to pull the repository or do anything or like committing and all the stuff. Uh, so yeah, you can, you know, you can also get your token details. But it's not normally not printed because of the security reasons. But yeah, you can get any of these information using the context called as GitHub. So it's it's kind of a variable from which you can get a lot of information about the workflow. Uh, what else some of them? So uh, that's about GitHub. And there are certain cases where you want to define some environment variables for your workflow or for your jobs or for your steps, which you can use uh, in, 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 in your steps. So you can also use that. Okay, so if you want to get some information about your job, you can use jobs. If you want to get some information about steps, you can use context steps. If you want to get information about where the test is running, what is the architecture of this uh, particular runner? For example, last test we have run it in Ubuntu latest. You want to get what is the name of that. So it will give you Ubuntu latest. If you use runner.os, it gives you in which OS it is running. So all this information you can get using the context variable called as runner. Let's say you want to store some secrets like username and password, which predominantly we do in case of test automation and how you can refer them. You can use context called as secrets. Good. In the same way, I, I will cover strategy matrix in, in detail in the upcoming classes. But, um, you know, for now, you know, these are all also contexts where you can get some information about matrices that you want to use. Um, and needs is basically uh, where uh, the context that will be really helpful when you, when you want to have multiple jobs and one job is different, uh, you know, dependent on another, and uh, at the time you might need this particular context. And inputs is a context where it will be helpful. Let's say if the workflow is triggered by someone manually, then you want to get certain inputs what that user in inputted. You can get all this information via inputs context. Now let's see a workflow. Okay. Now I have created a workflow called as context.yaml just to uh, explain this particular 
context topic. So now you notice this is the name of the workflow. By the time you all know how this can be triggered, this can be only triggered manually. Uh, and while triggering it, it might ask you certain inputs. So in this case, there is only one input that is text is the input. And you know, it, the, it will display a description like enter the word you want to print. Okay, because we are going to use what are the value that they are going to give? We are going to print it in the console. Just this is for demo purpose, right? So if they are not giving anything, we will use the hello one, right? This is a mandatory parameter. That's why we are using required as true. And then the type of this is by default string, or you can also define yourself. This is string. You can also define Boolean or choice or whatever. And next one is environment. So I have for, for all these jobs that I'm going to run, I have an environment, right? So this environment variable, I have two environments variable. Wherever I want to use first name, I want to use Amutan. Wherever there is a website, I want to use testing mobiles. So these are all the two environment variables that will be applicable to the jobs, to the multiple steps. So there is two jobs here. One is context demo, which is at the same indentation, and there is context demo two. These two are two jobs. And both these jobs can make use of this environment variable, right? But we also have environment, you can also have environment variable at the jobs level, which means uh, this particular job alone will use that. And we can also have environment variable at the step level. So let's say this particular step is having an environment variable first name. So it has an environment variable Amudan that is at the workflow level. It also have a step level environment variable first name that is testing. So which means the, the lowest one, the nearest one will have the preference. So it will basically prints testing. So how I am referring it? I use the, the context called as env and then env dot first name. So env dot first name. So that since there are two env dot first name, the preference is given to the local one. But in this case, let's say env dot website, this, this is a step. And this step doesn't have any local environment variables. So it, we are referring this environment.website, environment.website, which basically took from here, right? So now, whatever the context that we are trying to use, everything will be inside dollar curly braces and curly braces. Okay, now that's, that's how easy it is, right? Now, there is a job called as context demo. And here, this runs on. Previously, we have hard coded it as Ubuntu latest, but this time I'm giving Ubuntu latest inside a matrix. And then this is matrix.os. So we are using a context called as matrix.os to get this information. Okay. If I add comma and then add Windows latest and then Mac OS latest, then the particular job context demo will be ran three times. So this is like a matrix. So uh, like imagine in test automation, we have data provider where you run the test, same test three times, okay? <laughs> Here, you can parameterize this using matrix, okay? So that's the matrix.os that we are speaking about. So, so our, our focus should be on how we can use the context, where we can use the context matrix, okay? In, in the places where you are using matrix with strategy, you can use that, right? Now, so the first thing, first uh, context that we want, see about is github okay where i can use this let's go here so the first place that you can use is i want to know who have pre uh you know basically triggered this huh? so that that time it will give me uh, who is the username so for example this is amazon check right so it will give me the username as amazon check so that's that's how we can use this okay so echo and print this two there is also a place where github dot event GitHub has multiple levels, right? So GitHub dot, there is an event. And inside the event, there is something called as inputs. Inputs dot text. This is an event. I can also get event level information. If it is push request or pull request, what is the PR name? What is the push? Uh, like all these who pushed it, all the details I can get using GitHub dot event. And then here, this is a manual uh, trigger, right? So we are using input dot text. So you can also use github.events.input.text to get this particular value, whatever they are entering, okay? Also, there is a context called as inputs. Using that, we can also get text. So you can either use inputs.txt or github.input.txt. 
uh, events dot input dot text whatever right and then i'm trying to get the va value of this environment of first name so i can simply use hi and then environment dot first name again guys if you notice one thing very uh, clearly whatever i in output so all of them has to be inside the curly braces it you, you cannot do something like this okay you uh, let's say i will go to the this particular one let's say you cannot do something like this okay this is not good so whatever let's say you are trying to use some some hard coded value with the variables you have to enwrap all of them inside the single quotes that's how it works right you don't you should not do the other way around right so that's one thing i want to get the website information i use environment on website i want to check whether what is the status of this particular job context demo i can use job dot status so whatever i am saying the first word here they are all contacts they are all the contacts that we have seen before okay the same way i want to get which os it is running on our database now there is a section called a secrets dot password which is very very important in case of test automation where you want to pass some secrets hey amudan you have defined a uh, runner runner is basically coming from the github itself job okay it fetches from here but where are, where are these secrets coming from i don't know where this is coming from Guys, if you want to set up certain secrets, go to the settings here. Okay, go to the settings section in your repository and go to secrets. Click on actions, and here you can set up secrets. For example, I have two secrets, but I'm using the password one that I have created here. So if you want to update, you can update it here. Okay, but for now I don't want to update, so I want to leave it like that. So there is a password secret that I want to use. Good. So now. What, wherever you want to use the secret, you just need to tell secrets dot the secret name that is password. If you want to use this, then it should be secrets dot sonar sonar token. Yeah. So that's how you have to use it. Good. Now everything is done. But the thing here is after printing the secrets dot password, if it want to print the first name, there is a collision here. As we mentioned before, environment dot first name, it is also available at workflow level and at the step level but it will use the one at the step level you also notice there are two jobs if you have two jobs or multiple jobs by default they will run in parallel but in this case let's say this is a build operation and this is a deploy operation i want to wait for the build to complete before running this then you can use something called as needs which basically says hey wait for the context demo job context demo job to run and complete after that you can trigger this so that's the whole understanding here right so now enough of speaking uh, let's basically uh, create a new tab and here basically i'll try to run that so let's go to the actions and if you go to the context demo and then click on run workflow so if you notice it is asking enter the word you want to print so enter the word you want to print and whatever by default it gives you hello okay and if you don't give anything here it, it won't run so it's a mandatory field if you notice the star is here it's a mandatory field because record is true so i'm going to give hello world right i want to give this and i'll click on run workflow and now you can just reload this page and there is a thing sorted so if you notice this is a matrix, but this matrix is just having one value, which means it's kind of a data provided. This has one value. Like we can see about this matrix in detail, but for now, the first job is completed and then the second job is now getting started. So it have waited for the first job to complete before running the second job. So now let's click on this one. And if you notice, first, first one, after setting up the job, the first thing that you want to do is I want to print inputs dot text whatever that no so it basically printed the value so hello world so this is the output guys and this is the step name since we have not you know we, we can also define the name ourselves okay name is uh print value whatever print value okay you can also do that when you do that you don't have to give this so you can give like this okay so but in this case i don't want to give any name so that's the reason i gave, gave it empty 
So now by default, it assumes some name for the step, okay, to put it here. So that's why it put run echo hello world. So run echo, whatever the value it got, it used as a name here. So now, so this is the output of this particular program. And if you notice, this step has two ingram and variables, that is first name and website, that is coming from the environment here, okay? That's pretty cool. So now it printed hello world. That's what you want to print. Okay, next one. GitHub dot even dot inputs dot context. The same output we want to get. Yes, we are getting the same output even by using uh, GitHub context as well as inputs context, whatever. Third one. So I want to print GitHub dot actor. So it basically printed me Amazon check table because that's the uh, actor here in picture, right? Fourth one environment dot first name so there is no environment first name uh, inside the step there is nothing inside the job so it will use the environment variable that is available at the workflow level so it uses the uh, uh, so the, it uses the environment variable that is available at the workflow level okay apart from that next one is i want to print uh, the website hyphen environment dot website so environment.website is basically testing many bytes. So that's what it's getting printed here. Okay. Then I want to print it. What is the job status? So the job status is success. Okay. Then I want to print what is the OS. So OS is basically Linux. Then I want to print secrets.password and then environment.first. So if I open this, so if you notice, it's printed star 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 testing. Because this is a secrets and it won't print the secrets out. Okay, but when you are really passing it through your code or something, it will print it. And then if I expand this, if you notice very closely, in all the other step, it was using first name from the from the job level. But here it used the first name from the step level. So it will evaluate and give you clear idea from where this is fetching the first name from. So that's how cool it is. And then once it completes the job. Uh, it basically goes there and then it runs the context demo too. So context demo do will only run after running after the context demo. That's how easy it is. Let's say if you want to run them in parallel, you just remove this and then you can run it in parallel. So we will cover about this in the upcoming videos. But for now, just understand contexts are basically a placeholders from which you can get details about certain values at the runtime. Right, you can use this for any of the, uh, your purpose, but predominantly we will use something like secrets or inputs. Uh, if we want to access any of these, right? So I will see you guys in another great video. If you if you like the video, please share it with your friends and subscribe to the channel. So like I am putting a lot of efforts in creating videos. Um, no, I'm not worried that you know uh, you know I'm not getting enough subscribers and all that. The basically my idea is to take this knowledge to more people. Right, it's not about I am getting a lot of money from this course. If you, if you subscribe, you know, it's not like that. So the the reason why I ask you to share it with your friends is because, uh, you know, they will also get this knowledge. Let's let's basically, uh, you know, increase the knowledge of everyone in the transformation space. Right. Uh, so thanks, guys. Thanks for watching. Uh, you all have a very good day. Bye bye.